10 secrets you missed in the Vivo movie. Vivo, the new amazing animated movie of Netflix that everyone is loving right now. A movie that feels very nostalgic and takes us to a world full of live music and joyful moments that make it impossible for you to get bored while watching it. Netflix has been serving us with many great and original animated movies this year. They've given a lot more attention to creating beautiful animated movies rather than licensing other animated movies created by other studios. Vivo is such a great movie because of its emotional and inspiring storyline. Vivo tells the story of Andres Hernandez, a Cuban musician who plays music with his king Kachu called Vivo. One day, Andres receives a letter from his friend Marta Sandoval, who tells him that she's retiring from music and telling him to reconnect in Miami, Florida. Andres has feelings towards Marta, but he never told her anything about this, and he actually wrote a song about how he feels about her. But his pet Vivo likes his life in Cuba and doesn't want to go to Florida to meet Marta. Shortly after this, Andres unexpectedly passes away, which saddens Vivo, who feels guilty about being reluctant to go with him when he told him to go. After going to his funeral, he vows to sing Andres' letter about Marta to Marta in person. Here, Vivo stows away to Key West in Florida with Andres' niece Rosa and her daughter Gabby. Vivo is instantly hoped by Gabby's funny and overreactive personality. They become super friends and help each other on this journey to make Marta hear Andres a song about her. And this is how the beautiful movie starts, with the two new best friends embarking themselves on an adventure in Florida while going through amazing experiences together. Experiences that will make you laugh, smile, smile, cry, and all sorts of emotions. It's a movie full of beautiful moments that really make you cry and laugh at the same time. But there are a ton of hidden secrets in the Vivo movie that you most definitely didn't see, guys. Secrets that you probably didn't pick up on because you were too busy watching the movie. Secrets that you have to see a thousand times to actually see them. And that's exactly what I do. You know how it goes. So without further ado, let's get straight into the 10 secrets you missed in the Vivo movie. Let's go! After receiving the letter from Marta, Andres starts explaining the story of how him and Marta Sandoval met to Vivo. He tells him that she was a very special woman with an amazing voice and that he was in love with her and couldn't tell her that's why he wrote the last song for her. Now, during this scene, we see that Andres takes his trunk and starts showing Vivo old memories of Marta Sandoval. But right when he grabs the picture in black and white of Marta, we can see a newspaper right behind the album called El Dia de la Havana. This was a real newspaper which in reality was called El Diario de la Havana that covered all of the important news of the capital of Cuba, Havana, from the early 19th century to the end of the 20th century. This newspaper was a key part of the Cuban society at that time since there was no internet back then, and all of the information they received was from this newspaper. This newspaper closed sometime before the 26th of July movement took over the country, and as an honor, the directors of Vivo decided to put it in the movie for its key role in the lives of the Cuban people. Marta Sandoval is one of the main characters of the movie. She is the love of Andres, but he has never expressed his love for her. She's very talented and lives in the US. One day, Andres receives a letter from her, telling him that he could reunite with her in the US, to which Andres responds with an excitement attitude and is ready to go. But Vivo, who has been living in Cuba his entire life, doesn't want to go. Marta Sandoval is the center of the movie. It is the goal that pushes Vivo to go to the US. Well, Marta Sandoval is heavily inspired by the Cuban singer Gloria Stefan. Born in Havana, in 1857, she had the same dreams as Marta in the movie. She always wanted to go to the US and travel to different countries to make known her talent and music. And she actually did in the end, releasing hits like Rhythm Is Gonna Get You and Can Stay Away From You. And surprisingly enough, she's also the voice of Marta in the movie, basically giving a tribute to the character that reflects her personality the most. Now, Andres plays all types of instruments, he's a big musician, but as a good native Cuban, he specializes on the guitar, and we can see the ability he has to play it in many great scenes, especially when Andres reads the letter of Marta telling him to reunite in the US. Here, we see that he plays many instruments like the piano, but what he is a master at is in the guitar. He takes his guitar, and as soon as he starts playing it, it turns blue. Now, this isn't a typical guitar, if you really look at it, you can spot the many differences that it has with a normal guitar. If we take a look at a typical guitar, we can see that the chords are aligned and are not separated. But if we take a closer look at the guitar of Andres, we see that it's separated in three rows of two chords. This is because he's playing the Cuban tres. Originating in Eastern Cuba in the 19th century, the tres defined Cuban music with its characterizable pitch and sound. He was created by Afro-Cubans who wanted to change the sound of the guitar and give their music a specific sound that no other culture had. This is how the tres was born. And since the tres is such a symbol of the Cuban culture, it had to be represented in view. 
Vivo. When Andres dies, Vivo feels guilty for not wanting to go and starts a mission to go to the US and fulfill Andres' dream of showing Marta the song he wrote for her. Now, when he dies, he has a funeral, and during the funeral, Vivo meets Andres' niece, Gabby, a very fidgety and fun girl who puts her piece of enthusiasm in everything she touches. Her personality instantly attracts Vivo like a magnet, and they both start a journey of showing Marta the song. Now, the appearance of Gabby is not random. She has been inspired most definitely by a Raleigh Chan, the character of the anime Dr. Slump. If we take a close look at the hair, it's the same, purple. She wears glasses, just like Gabby, she is short, just like Gabby, and she has a very loud and fun personality, just like Gabby. The director of Vivo, Kirk Demico, has stated several times in many interviews that he loved watching animes as a kid, and they were his main inspiration to start directing kid movies. So this is almost a clear evidence that Kirk created Gabby based on a Raleigh Chan of Dr. Slump. Now, when Gabby and Vivo go to the US, Gabby doesn't tell her mom that she has brought an animal with her. So she hides him in a room, and in one scene, Gabby's mom enters her room, and Vivo has to hide from her. So he makes himself look like a stuffed animal hugging the toy tower of Gabby. But this isn't just another scene. The position of Vivo in this scene is a reference to the scene of the movie King Kong. When King Kong climbs to the top of the Empire State Building in New York, and the planes come to shoot him down. It's an exact reference to the scene. They see on the internet that to be able to get to Miami, they need a bus. So they buy a bus ticket from the internet, but when they go to take the bus, Gabby finds her enemies, and they entertain her, and she loses the bus. So after this, they have to make a wooden ship and cross through a mysterious place. This place is called Everglades, and it actually exists in real life. The wetland is located in South Florida, and it's the largest and most vast subtropical wilderness in the country. And if we see the location in real life, we can see why them crossing the wetland makes a lot of sense. Gabby and her mom live in Key West, and Standing in between the two cities is the big Everglade wetland mass extending from one point to another. In real life, the journey from point to point is very, very far, but obviously in the movie, they do it fast. Before making the boat and sailing across the sea to get to the coast of the Everglade wetland, Vivo and Gabby try to get a bus, like I said before, to Miami, but Gabby sees the bad girls of her school selling cookies at a cookie stand in downtown Key West. She tries to hide from one of the girls, but she sees her. They entertain her and they miss the bus, which they try to follow with a bike, but the bus takes off. Now, not a lot of people are focused on the cookie boxes that these girls are selling in the movie, but the design and the animals on it are not random. All of the animals on the boxes are the main fauna of the Everglade wetland. We see the dolphins, the crocodiles, and the turtles on the boxes, and all of them live in Everglade. A little secret that few people picked up on. When Gabby and Vivo get into the Everglade wetland, the first thing Gabby tells them is not to make noises, as other animals would hear them and probably attack them. And in one of the scenes after this, we see Vivo, Gabby, and the other girls trapped in the wilderness alone, and the same snake who tried to attack Vivo in the scene before comes back and tries to catch them. But Vivo does a very ingenious trick. He starts swinging on the trees while the snake is getting tangled by every cross move he makes. And by the time Vivo finishes the song, the snake is completely tangled in the trees and can't reach him. Where have you seen this before? Yes, in Tarzan. This is a reference to the scene when Tarzan starts swinging on the trees the same way Vivo did and finally tangles the snake in the trees so much that it can't reach him to catch him and eat him. Tarzan sits and acts almost identically to Vivo in the same reference scene. Vivo and Gabby finally get to sneak into the back of the show where Marta's performing. Vivo and Gabby go through multiple adventures to finally get to Marta at the back of the show, but when Vivo goes to show Marta the song, he finds her crying while holding the newspaper and seeing the news that Andres Hernandez passed away. Now, in this same scene, if we take a close look at the right side of the newspaper, we see a section that talks about the history of the Quarteto Tropical. The Tropical Quartet was a very famous group based on La Habana, Cuba, that really cemented the singing and dancing culture of the Cubans. This group is a Cuban classic and is played a lot during celebrations because of its great sounding Cuban music. Finally, Vivo gets to show Marta Sandoval the song Andres wrote for her, and she performs it on stage as the final song of her show. A beautiful ending, but after this, all of the characters of the movie appear in a final choreography, with Vivo singing and dancing in such a slick way. Vivo sings this smooth and great song, and while he's singing, he takes a maraca with the Cuban flag in it, and plays with it like a microphone for a bit. But if you actually remember, this is the same maraca Vivo was grabbing at the beginning of the movie, and the same maraca that Gabby takes with her in the suitcase of Andres when they attend the funeral. And well, my dudes, that's all the dose of DJ the rest for today, my guys. I really hope you liked the video and enjoyed the secrets you missed in the Vivo movie. Secrets that had I not showed them to you, you wouldn't have seen them, my dudes. Let's be honest, I know you guys. If you liked the movie, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up if you like it. Subscribe, and I will catch you on the next one, my boys. Peace!